Well, I have been outside and training. You always keep working on your core, your first foundation. I will start building my course today. I will record stuff and I will put everything into a course. I will put, you know, diet, exactly how to eat, you know, nutrition density, OMAD, everything I know about diet, everything I know about OMAD, everything I know about fasting, dry fasting, water fasting, all of that stuff, uh, calisthenics, uh, how to sleep better, uh, how, to, how to improve, you know, everything, uh, minimalism, uh, cut things out, dopamine fasting, some dopamine fasting, uh, all of that stuff and meditation as well. All of that stuff I will put into a whole course that you guys can, you know, everything will be, you know, organized. It won't be a system, but it will be organized. You know, you got the fasting, you got the nutrition, you got this and that. There will be some theory, all of that stuff. And, uh, it will be great, 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 great. You can improve your life with it. That is the whole point. Uh, this whole guide here, a philosopher's guide to a better life, uh, that will be the course. Uh, the stuff on YouTube will be, you know, more, you know, the theoretical parts. And perhaps I will put some of this stuff in the course as well, because some of it is so great, you know. So, and, <clears throat> But YouTube will be, you know, my, I will share my philosophy, you know, you can just, you can take all this stuff and just implement and yeah. And so today I wanted to talk about several things. Perhaps I'll make several videos. I want to talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, there are a lot of comments. Uh, some people want to know my opinion on Jordan Peterson. I don't know how many people care about that. The thing is, what's more important is your life, not what my opinion is on everything. All right. My opinion, of course, on, you know, truth and stuff like that when it comes to my philosophy, of course. But um, let's delve into perhaps I'll also explain, you know, my story, where I come from, uh, who I am, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but I've given, you know, some, some of that stuff in all the previous lectures. So I'm like slowly giving you more and more about myself. So, you know, naturally, it naturally happens that way. So, so I was thinking of speak, talking about meaning of life today. Uh, the whole purpose of why I'm doing everything here. Uh, perhaps that will, you know, naturally go into uh, everything. So... What is the meaning of life? Uh, this question could be asked like this. Um, what is the meaning of life? Or like what meaning does life <laughs> have <laughs> i'm combining you know all right so uh meaning here life all right so what meaning life what it what is life basically meaning of life meaning of life what what's the what value does life have what value well the thing is only a sentient being can ask this you don't see an elephant asking what meaning does my life have or what does, what does, what's the meaning of life, you know? A, an elephant doesn't do that. I don't even think dolphins do that. Uh, even if they're tru truly very smart, intelligent, highly intelligent, 
uh, elephants are also highly intelligent and chimpanzees are highly intelligent not just humans but they're sentient but they don't create civilization that's the main difference all right they don't have language the same way we have uh, dolphins have language they all have language but they can't speak so technically speech is most important you know speech speech they don't have speech they don't have you know tools the same way we have tools they have a little bit but we have advanced tools advanced tools i am using an a truly advanced tool right now recording this they don't have that animals don't have that but we are animals so there is a difference there are similarities there are differences we are animals we have instincts we have all of this stuff they have very similar stuff for example um even elephants mourn their dead and you know exactly like humans so well not exactly like humans but very similar so you know speech is important all of that stuff but so behind you know the question is this you know we're the only ones who you know started philosophizing and we then eventually started creating civilization my definition of a sentient being who can understand this and you know this has an application to life only to highly sentient beings highly sentient beings we can you know highly sentient beings highly because there is a different we have sentient beings but highly sentient beings highly highly sentient beings all right so so but the, the, this of course this of course doesn't answer what's the meaning of life all right it doesn't answer that but but all right so the meaning of life all right and there is a difference between the meaning of life and purpose What's my purpose? What, what is my, or what is purpose, you know? Purpose. What is purpose? Now, meaning of life, there is meaning of life and there is purpose, all right? They are, they are related the same way I'm related to my cousins, <laughs> they are related, and the same way we are related to chimpanzees. This is humans, and this is chimpanzees. <laughs> or, you know. um, this has direction. This is value. All right, so. You know, of course, this also has value, but it's beneath. It also has value, but it's behind the scenes here. You know, it is behind the scenes. It is beneath it. It's the very, you know. The thing is that when we ask the question, what's the meaning of life? We can get, you know, many answers. And there's been a lot of answers. My family, you know, my family is the meaning of life. Your, your family, your this, your that, you know, your partner, your, your children, your work. Everything is your meaning of life. Some people, you know, believe in God. So God is the meaning of life. Uh, religion is meaning of life. Community is meaning of life. Everything is meaning of life. All right. So <laughs> everything can't be meaning of life, but the meaning of life is utterly utterly you know if we look at the core the core of the meaning of life all right so that is just value so we have to be you know sentient beings highly sentient beings are the only ones who can do this all right so what does that mean that means we have existence and non-existence you know Because, 
you can ask yourself, you know, why even do anything? You know, everything is meaningless. Everything is just material. Everything is just, you know, like a nihilist. All right. But the difference is that you have existence and you have non-existence. Uh, this value can only, the question itself, the question itself can only exist in existence. Non-existence has nothing, all right? Nothing. And when I say nothing, really nothing, you know? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Non-existence is nothing. It's not even quanta, all right? It's not even quantum mechanics. It can't pop up from nothing. It is nothing here. And I speak from the human perspective here because this is the human perspective. This is human. This can only be human. All right. This question can only be asked by humans as far as we know. I mean, obviously, there might be, there might be aliens that can ask these questions as well. But so you can't say that, you know, this has to have some value because it is human. If it doesn't have any value, the question couldn't even pop up, all right? Non-existence has nothing, all right? And it, it, there is no experience. There is non-experience. There is non-experience. You see, uh, for me, experience and existence, they become, you know, the same thing. So, you just... <laughs> you, uh, I just noticed it, you know, automatically I said experience instead of existence. It's the same thing because as far as we know, you know, human experience is human ex existence. It is the same thing. No, not that way. <laughs> well, this is separate here. So, all right, these two are the same thing. All right, the same thing, the same, 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 same thing, existence and experience. And this question can only be asked in existence. So obviously there is some value, all right? And there is some value to this question, all right? There has to be because we're alive, we have the survival instinct. The survival instinct is the deepest, deepest meaning, you know? Health, health is the deepest, you know, value. I mean, if you don't value your health, you might as well become non-existence and, you know, end it, <laughs> all right? You might as well end it because unless, because if you truly don't think there is meaning in this question, meaning at all, then you might as well join this non-existence, all right? And be non-existence forever and ever and ever while others try to improve their health, improve the meaning of life. That is the whole purpose of my philosophy, improving the meaning of life, improving one's health, improving one's core. When I speak of diet, when I speak of improving diet, sleep, exercise, all of that stuff, that is this. Not just that, of course. I mean, reading, partners, socialization, family, creating a family, all of that stuff is within this, of course. So, so this is the sister question. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? I hope people understand what I'm saying here with ex experience and non-experience or, or existence, non-existence. You know, th there is only, you know, experience. If you are alive and you're listening to me, <laughs> you have some experience and you're obviously a sentient being. Otherwise, you couldn't understand what I'm saying anyway. So uh, dogs are not watching what I'm doing here. Dogs are not watching this because they don't need to because they never ask the question. They, they have pure instinct and they just, that's why I'm uh, saying that our ancestors were naive and were more like dogs, basically, you know, <laughs> well, more advanced, of course, they had, you know, the tools, but um, they just follow their instinct. I'm hungry, I'm gonna find something to eat. Perhaps I won't find anything today, so. So they fasted, you know, naturally. So, you know, they were naive. We're not as naive. We're too much aware. We are too aware. We have the prefrontal cortex. We are way too aware 
And that's why my philosophy is about, you know, taming this, you know, prefrontal cortex, basically taming or, you know, not just taming, it's, it's not taming. It is, you know, using it in a healthy manner. You use your prefrontal cortex with your salamander, as I call it, or your reptile brain, or, you know, your instinct. Your in, you have your instinct and your prefrontal cortex, and these two will have a healthy relationship. All right, you have a healthy relationship to yourself first. That is the first purpose principle. I will get to this, all right? Uh, that is purpose. That's here. So this is the background of the purpose. So you know, everything has layers. Everything has layers. This is the sister question. And this is the main question behind everything. Because this is the question I've been asking myself deeply since I was 15 years old. But uh, as I've uh, said before, I think this question popped up already when I was like 10 or you know something like that. Uh, because philosophy came into, you know, existence through, you know, the tension between spirituality and nature or science. Science and spirituality, uh, for me, you know, religion or science, whatever you want to, you know, those clashed and that became philosophy for me. Uh, that's my story there. Uh, that's the origin of all of my philosophy. So this is the question I've been asking myself for a very, very long time. And I've been thinking about it, you know, every day, basically every single day, at least a little bit every single day. And some days, you know, I went deep despair, deeply within myself. I went, you know, in the beginning, I, I didn't, you know, I, I was born, I was raised, you know, happy. I was always happy. Um, you know, great friends, all of that stuff, you know, perfect. I mean, of course, not perfect, but, you know, basically perfect. I, I, I had, I have great parents, great family, everything. And now obviously not all of them are great, but most of them, like 90% is great or more even. Uh, and I got everything, toys. <laughs> I had like a billion Batman toys. All right. I had, I was, um, they, um, my parents, uh, they gave me actually too much stuff, in my opinion. Uh, they should have, you know, they should have made me do push-ups instead. <laughs> they should have, you know, done stuff like that. But it doesn't matter. It's not their fault. Um, you can't just, you know, that's the thing, you know, you shouldn't just put everything on other people. That's why you never get anywhere. You got to accept it and just, you know, move on, work on yourself and fix yourself. And then you help and fix others. All right. That's the way you do it. All right. Because I know it because I went deep, deep, deep within myself. And then I went out of it. I took myself out of it. I took myself out of it through my philosophy. So if you are in deep despair, you just have to follow. All right. You just have to follow and don't do not think that life is meaningless. If it is meaningless, we might as well join this. All right. You don't think it's meaningless because your health is not meaningless. Uh, you know that in your instinct, in your deepest instinct, you know this. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you anything. Actually, you know what you have to do. You know everything what you have to do. I was organized as a kid and I realized, you know, when I fixed myself that I was great at as a kid. Now I got to get back to my core. That is my core being more organized, you know, watch being the watcher, not just the inner child, the naive artist, you know, I want to be the artist. I want to create this stuff. I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, you got to first fix yourself before you, you got to have a strong first foundation. So you don't, you know, so everything doesn't, you know, just, uh, turn terribly, you know, so your work can stand on something like I'm doing here. Otherwise I would just, you know, otherwise I would just be confused here. Like, yeah, many meaning of life might be this, it might be that it might be this. That's what it would look like this. 
the fact that I'm speaking this, um, this you know, uh, authoritatively, basically, is because of experience. You've got to have experience, you know, experience and knowledge. Philosophy means, you know, um, the love for knowledge. Knowledge is information, but knowledge is useless unless we apply it to something. So applying means wisdom, and that means, you know, experience. Uh, so you get experience and you read, you know, you do both, of course. You got to read, but you got to read other people's experience, but you have to do this stuff to have experience. You can't just do this, you know, this stuff, uh, philosophizing. You can't just philosophize. You have to, you know, work on yourself. That is more important. Now, for you guys, you shouldn't philosophize at all unless you want to be philosophers. Then you should philosophize. But, but also apply, all right? If you have some idea, apply it and then see if it works. If it does work, discard it or, or just put it on the side for, for the moment, you know. You might need it later. The same way I, I talked about Newman, I, I paused it and then I brought it back now, like a year later or something. I had a lot of ideas about Newman spirituality, but I made, you know, um, I'm posting it now, my video from yesterday. I went like almost two hours about spirituality and I could do more, all right? Oh, and by the way, if you think that my definition was broad there, uh, we're speaking about experience. Experience, the word experience has to be a broad term and it has many factors. So, of course, the spirituality experience will be uh, multiple, you know, factors. And the same with everyday experience, you know, diet, sleep, everything, you know. So, and that makes sense here as well. You know, we're talking about experience here. We're talking about experience, existence. If you can listen to me now, you have experience, you are experience, you're experiencing the world, you are existence, and this question can only exist in existence, and thus it has meaning because otherwise, why would we even ask the question? Uh, obviously, life has meaning for us. We don't even have to look at this, just look at life, and you realize, of course, I have my health, I have my core, of course, I have my instinct, I don't want to die, I want to survive. So, I want to survive means health, I want to improve my health, it doesn't matter what it is, money, I need money, yeah, you need money, otherwise, you're always, you know, stressing out, if you stress out, that is unhealthy, you see, everything is connected with money, that's why I'm speaking of health, wealth, relations, spirituality. But that's one way of looking at it, you know. Health, basically everything is under the umbrella of health. Health is everything. Without your health, you're nothing. You can't help your parents. You can't help, if you can't help yourself, you can't help others. You can't help your parents. You can't help your um, wife. You can't help your children. You can't do anything. If you're fat, if you're, you know, everything, you, you, you have all this baggage, all nonsense on you, you gotta fast, you gotta get to your instincts. When you fast, you will get to your instincts. You gotta train, you will get to your instincts. Now, for example, I was, um, I was doing my, you know, squats today. Uh, and so, so yeah, it was cold and so forth. But then I went, you know, uh, inside here and I went, you know, basically naked <laughs> and I am standing at the, at the window, this is a trick, if, if it's winter and it's very cold outside, um, you can get some sun exposure. So I already felt, you know, the sun now, I could, I can almost feel energized, well, I could feel energized and my instinct just, you know, I could feel this summer feeling, it's not even summer, but I could feel this summer feeling, this energization, this, you know, I want to, almost, I want to build a family, <laughs> almost, you know, this, you know, I want to do stuff, I want to do things, energized, pure energy. And that is my instinct there. And literally, I'm getting, you know, vitamin D in my body. The body creates vitamin D. So all of that stuff will be in my course. How that works? Well, 
I won't go too deeply into how that works either, but the important thing is, you know, doing stuff like that, you know, uh, getting sun exposure is super, super important for your health. Everything is about health. Even asking this question means that you're asking your health. You're like, you're asking basically, why am I living? Is my health good? Like, is my health good? Is it bad? Why am I even, you know, so your survival instinct there, you know, but that's why I, I spoke of the core. Instead of going inwards like that, you know, you just keep on asking like, what is my core? What is me? So eventually you will get depressed no wonder, because you'll you start questioning the core, questioning this, and you start moving towards this, towards non-existence. You don't want to be at non-existence because that is nothing, and nothing is pure boring. Nothing is boring, and not just boring, it is, you know, mediocre because most things, <laughs> this will make no sense, but most things are non-existence. Well, you know, non-existence will be, you know, I believe non-existence is longer. This is, uh, this is very difficult to describe, but non-existence is longer. It, it exists longer than existence, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, before the universe existed, let's say, nothingness existed longer. <laughs> nothingness existed. Uh, that makes no sense because if it has to be nothingness, it is nothing. Well, we don't have to, you know, that is just, you know, intellectual uh, uh, garbage. It is just, you know, we don't need that because when we talk about human existence, we understand what it is. So it makes even more sense. So we can skip universe. Just human, when you are alive, you are light. It's like light, you know. The metaphor of light um, or fire this is your life and you know it goes like this you know in the beginning it is like this and then you know you grow up you grow up so everything is like everything is you know a spectrum you know and then you die you're born and then you die or birth death all right this is all perfectly normal. And you see, it's the same with quantum mechanics here. It looks like quantum mechanics now. So uh, everything is this. And even the universe is that, you know, the universe started like small and then, you know, well, it's not like this. It doesn't look like this, but you know, and that is the same thing, you know, it will be like this. It's the same, it's the same thing. Everything is the same thing. Everything is connected. Everything is the same. <laughs> and, um, but we can look at, you know, human life. Human life, again, because, you know, experience, you know, your experience is not as long as your non-existence. You know, history is here. History is here. You are here. A future is here all right this is dead this is existence for you i mean we, everything is a human here the past is dead the past is dead existence is alive and now and this isn't born yet not born this is future existence. This will be existence. You see, there is a direction there. There is a direction. History, you, future. All right. And so this is the light. This is the fire. This is the fire. 
this is death this is exit this is your you know this is life this is life this is you this is you and so we have this flame this is our flame this is the inner flame this is your health this is your core so your existence you want to improve your existence you want to have the flames beautiful you you know you don't want you know mediocre flames you don't want you don't want your life let's go with the blue you don't want your life to be you know like this you don't want your life to be like this you want your life to be you know with spikes you know you want your life to have you know an impact you want your life to be something all right you want your life to be something perhaps even you know perhaps even like this you know you're improving yourself you know you gotta have the you we can't deny you know the the depths you know you gotta have the terrible times as well but we go like this all right we want the heights all right we want the heights now obviously you will go back to yourself your inner core your inner wisdom but then you go upwards up the mountain just continue like that until you just go beyond yourself and this is just increasing health health increasing it just you know goes up all right this is you trying to fix your foundation fixing your diet and then you might fail a little bit but then you you just you find yourself like okay something is working something is working here all right i think i found something but you know my um, my habits you know it doesn't quite work with my habits you know the diet all right i got the diet but my habits there like my routine is in the morning you know and stuff like that and you just continue like this with everything and with your business with everything is like that all right now <laughs> now obviously all right so we got some stuff there uh i think you understand what i'm saying now when it comes to uh value you know meaning of life and uh What's the meaning of life, all right? But what is purpose then? Let's go with blue. What is purpose then? Purpose is the sister question. Sister. They are related, like everything else is related. Everything is related. This is all human, human endeavors. Questioning, philosophizing, philosophy this is philosophy if you are uh, asking this question you are a philosopher all right you don't have to be an academic to be a philosopher you're a philosopher i'm telling you all right socrates didn't go to a school of philosophy he was a school of philosophy you should be a school yourself a school of philosophy all right, the same way I'm doing stuff here. This is my school of philosophy. This is my Lukeon. This is my academy. All right, the Mitkovsky Academy. All right, so what is purpose? Purpose has direction. Purpose has direction. It, it is related to this, but this is your purpose in life. What is my purpose? What is my passion? That is basically this. But passion, you know, passion is obsession. Obsession. Your obsession, your, you know. They're related as well. But, you know, uh, they're all related, but, you know, uh, purpose is the behind the scenes here. So we have three purpose principles 
three purpose principles. Principles. All right. There are three purpose principles. There is There is helping, helping yourself, helping others. Because you know, if you if you work out, if you acquire instincts, when you do all that stuff, you will hit a wall. I call it the wall. Hit. You will hit the wall. This is you improving your core. You have this wall, you're going this direction. And you just, you increase, you increase your, your core. You, you improve your core rather. You go, these are your steps. All right, this will be the steps, all right? I'm always doing steps like this, so this will be steps. But there is a wall here. Wall of improvement. Wall of self-improvement. I just, I just realized it. I just, uh, just came to me right now. So. The wall of self Improvement. Improvement. The wall of self-improvement. You will hit the wall eventually. You start working on yourself. You start, you know, OMAD. You start, um, you start training. You, you train more. But then you, you train like all, all of your days and <laughs> you train like three hours or something or you know you just you get results this is more important you you go for your higher desire check my lecture on higher desire you, you you focus on your higher desire so in a sense yes you are actually focusing on your goal you want your de you desire these you know you desire these muscles you want to have muscles you want to look good all right you don't want to be this lazy nothing person you want to create something, you want to be something, you want to be someone, you want to become something, becoming, all right? I'm working on a website, I'm writing about becoming there. So that website will, everything will be on my website eventually. I want to have everything at my core. You see, everything I work with is for my core, everything, all right? That is the best, that is because your core is unique. You are the only one with this core. I'm with this core and this other person is with this core and this core and this core, you know, we got 7 billion cores in the world or 7 point, what is it now? 5 or 6 or something or 0.4, doesn't matter, it will change, it will be like 10 billion in the future and we have all these cores in the world, all unique and they're unique because you have your diet, I have my diet, you, this other guy has this diet, this girl has this diet, this woman has this diet, you know, grandpa has this diet. Everyone, these are starting to look like uh, people here. Um, your core, the core is people. Um, this guy, all right, so now everyone has, you know, eyes. Or this is a mouth, we gotta have an eye here. <laughs> gotta be perfect. Uh, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, as long as you, you go somewhere, you're getting results, that is more important than being perfect, right? Don't be perfect. 
We're perfecting things. We're not perfect. Because when we're perfect, there is nothing else to do. When we're perfect, there is no more stuff to do in, in, the, in, in life. And thus, the meaning of life will become meaningless. But it can't. Because perfection doesn't exist. I already explained this. Perfection, perfection doesn't exist. So you never have to worry about perfection. All right. The more important thing is to start, start changing yourself. When you change yourself, you change your destiny. All right. You can change your destiny. You change your destiny by changing yourself. You change your fate, your character, you build your character. All right. Everything is about character as well. Your health, your core is building, improving your character. You can see it like that as well. So yeah, you will hit a wall, you will hit a wall, you are improving yourself, you are seeing results because your core is now here, 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 here. So when you hit the wall, you will realize, and that's why I speak of experience. You have to do this stuff and experience this. You will understand what I'm saying when you, when you experience this. That's why experience is the most important, that is why it's connected to meaning of life and asking these questions and the stuff behind it, you know, the non-existence, existence, all that stuff. You have to do the stuff, you have to have experience. When you gain experience, when you have some results, you will hit the wall and you will realize, wait, why am I just, am I just training, exercising for myself? Am I just eating all this, um, all this, great food, you know, better food, improving my uh, plate, improve, improving my, the way I eat. Am I doing all of this stuff for myself only? What is the meaning of that? So again, you know, the meaning of life again pops up, you know, but this time it is in a healthy manner. It is not the way, you know, most people, you know, what is the meaning of life? Ruminating. Is, is it this? Is it that? Should I be this? Should I be that? Am I this? Am I that? No, you are your core. You're nothing else. You're just your health. All right. That is the only thing you are. Your personality is also your core. All right. You're born with a personality. Personality is actually born partly from birth. All right. So you have your talent. Everyone has their talent, but everyone doesn't take the steps. You don't know? take these steps. And do stuff be creator be a creator and so you realize that all right so so you see my prefrontal cortex went this is exactly basic I mean I'm speaking to you the same way I would speak to my mother to my you know partner or you know anyone my friends I would speak I speak to you exact same way I speak to everyone else I don't change I don't well you, you see, it is a bit, you know, paradoxical. I don't change in that sense. I change all the time. I always improve myself. But, you know, like with the, I felt the instinct stuff. So that is getting, you know, more experience. That is part of improving my core. The sun stuff I explained earlier. So, for example, so you hit the wall. You ask yourself, your prefrontal cortex goes, well, wh why am I doing all this stuff? But since you've developed your core, your instincts, you will have a healthier instinct. So your instinct and your prefrontal cortex will be much healthier, healthier relationship. You build this relationship within yourself and you realize, wait, I can help others doing this. So you don't have to even, exp you, can exp you should experience this and then you listen to my words and then you just, you know, you just continue with your life. Or you just realize it and you don't have to, you know, someone else might realize this and, you know, might want to create their own philosophy and that is fine. At least people are trying to get better. All right. That is the main goal with everything here. 
I want to help others because I help myself. I realize that I help myself, now I want to help others. So the first purpose principle is just focusing in the beginning on yourself, on yourself, helping yourself. So that is the first purpose principle. Purpose because there is a goal, direction, you improve your core, your goal and direction is to improve your health, your core, all the time, every day, a little bit every day. It doesn't matter if you fail one day, you continue next day, next week. Perhaps you start to eat hamburgers again. Again, next week, I'm gonna try paleo again. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get paleo. I wanna eat paleo. You know, I didn't start eating the way I eat now. It doesn't just happen, you know. This philosophy didn't just happen yesterday. This is a lot of, you know, inner thoughts, a lot of inner conflict. And now you see the results, but you see the results so you think that, you know, the same way people think that uh, Lionel Messi, the football player, the soccer player, everyone thinks that talent, you know, you're born, you're born as Einstein and there is nothing else you can do. Too bad. No, you are born with talent, your personality, your character, and then you improve, you build your character, you improve your character, and then you align it also with your talent, and that's when you become great, all right? My talent is language, communicating, helping, teaching. My talent is also, you know, uh, artistic expression, expressive, ex expressiveness. I, I am artistic, always been artistic and philosophizing. Those are my two things. I've always been curious, so science and stuff like that. So you, you t take your talents. Messi understood very early, his talent is football, he was born to play football, but he's also training every single day. He's also training every single day. The same way I have to train this every single day as well. And I have done that th through the years. But the problem was that I didn't train myself, my body, you know. Everyone should have a great body. Back in the ancient Greece, they had great bodies. They trained gymnastics, Spartans, they emphasized gymnastics, all of that stuff. They were great in, at the Olympics. The Spartan women were great at the Olympics. So if they could do this, you can do this. All right, it doesn't mean that you have to become win an Olympic medal, but you should be resilient, strong, because without that foundation, how are you supposed to help others? So that is the second purpose principle. The first is helping yourself. When you hit the wall, the wall of self-improvement, you start asking yourself again, what is the meaning of what I'm doing here? What is the meaning of life? And then, so, you know, meaning and purpose and direction they just, you know, have a dynamical relationship. Value, value and direction. As, as long as we're talking about humanism, this is a dynamical dynamical relationship, as you can see here, right? As you can see here, it is correct. I don't have to ask you guys. <laughs> you see, meaning I, I started, I, I, I went with purpose, I went with direction, I wanna just improve my health. That in the beginning, I just wanted to improve my health, nothing else, I don't care about anyone else, I don't care about anything else. I just don't want to be in despair. I just don't want to be like this. I don't want to be young in my mid twenties and have knee pain like an idiot. <laughs> and you know, it is embarrassing. It is embarrassing for myself, not for others. You know, I can't stand on my two, own two feet. You gotta fix that. All right, you gotta fix that. I don't care who you are. You can be in your 40s, 50s. You, you can have, you know, wealth, success, but you still haven't helped yourself. You're still 
killing yourself with your diet, with not exercising. You're still destroying your core. Your core is everything. That is the meaning of life, your core. This is the meaning of life, all right? Your health is the meaning of life. And health has many aspects. So we can't just do one thing. And that is the purpose of my philosophy. Connecting, collecting all the knowledge necessary for improving the core, nothing else. And no pills, no drugs. We want to be self-resilient, self-control, self-creating, always, always, always. We don't need any externals. We only need our body, nothing else. And our mouth and brain, core, brain, that's all we need. And then we can help others with that as well. We don't need anything else, all right? Well, I need the camera, but... Uh, and computer and stuff like that, but I need this as well, but the whiteboard. All right, so purpose, purpose principles. So yeah, so you realize I wanna help others now because I've helped myself, I'm mature enough to help others. Now you will see when this will be up and down as well, you know, the, the same way everything will be this, you know, like this. Now, obviously, you will die eventually, <laughs> so it will go down like that, you know. Or like, or you're like this, you should be at your top and then you should just end. <laughs> you should end being great, you know, you should end being great. But technically, you know, you get older and older, you know, you go down like that, you know, birth, death. And stop ruminating about death and birth and all of that stuff. Death at height or heights. You know, you just end it here. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when it ends. It doesn't matter when it ends because when it ends, you become non existence and there is nothing to worry about. You're nothing. You know, I like Epicurus. You're nothing. You don't have to worry about when he said, you know, when death is, you are not. When you are, death is not. When you are alive, your existence, your experience. When you're de death, when you're dead, you are non-existence. You are non-experience. You see, that's why it is connected. You don't have to. That's why when we're human, when we're alive, we do care about the core, about health. Otherwise, we wouldn't be alive. Otherwise, we would be non-existent. So if you truly don't care about your health and so become non-existence, right? There are only two ways. Do you want to be existence or do you want to be non-existence? There is no point in just torturing your, your... There is no point in torturing, continually torturing your core. No, there is no point in that. What are you trying to accomplish there? Some philosophy? Why, are not, what are, why aren't you creating uh, books then? If you're trying to create some philosophy, some pessimism, some new pessimism. You're the new Schopenhauer. Why are you not create? Uh, but if you want, even then, you're creating a philosophy because you have to. You have the instinct that you still want to have it better. I don't care how pessimistic you are. All right? It's the same way how Nietzsche said uh, Schopenhauer... Uh, a pessimist, he, he, he couldn't truly be a pessimist because he was playing uh, the flute, I think it was. Something like that, some instrument. I think it was the flute. Someone who plays music cannot be truly a pessimist. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so you improve your core, you improve this. And when you hit the wall of self-improvement, when you are mature enough, mature enough, mature enough when you're mature enough you will realize that you want to help others creating this all right but don't get you got to be mature enough so you don't listen you know there are so many opinions out there there are so many things you listen to your instincts Develop your instincts, develop yourself, 
and then when you're ready you help others without them you know influencing you all right without them influencing you you listen to your instinct and you go after that for example you know people now uh I did some comments on, you know, Jordan Peterson uh, videos and stuff like that, or other videos. I'm doing that, you know, I'm showing myself to the world. But, you know, they will get, you know, what's your opinion on this? What's your opinion on that? No, this is my opinion on life. This is my work. This is what I work on. Nothing else. All right. This is the most important thing in, this is what drives me. This is my purpose. All right, this is my purpose, this is my passion, this is my obs obsession. I am obsessed with this. You gotta be obsessed with stuff. The same way my angel I spoke of yesterday, well, you will see the video later. Uh, I spoke of, you know, my, in the poem, like I have these um, mentors and, you know, that was an unexpected mentor for me. So, and he was obsessed with, you know, diet and sleep and exercise and stuff like that. But I didn't do that because of him, because I started actually writing my book first. Then I became, you know, obsessed with that. But I realized that when I was writing my book later, you know, I just want to improve my health, nothing else. Well, naturally, then you ask yourself, how do I improve my health? Well, diet and exercise, you know, the most obvious, everyone knows this instinctually, everyone knows everything extinctually. <laughs> No, instinctually. Everyone knows everything instinctually. So you start, you are mature enough, you don't, you don't care about other people's opinion, you don't care about anything, even if, you, if they give you, you know, feedback, good feedback and stuff. You don't care about anything because you're your own feedback, you use your own prefrontal cortex, you develop that relationship with yourself. That's all you need. You don't need anything. You don't need anything. But in the beginning, you need to listen to me because you're not able to do anything. And you'll get faster, I believe, if you follow my stuff. Go faster than I did, you know. You learn from other people's experience as well. That's why you read books. That's why you should read the correct books for whatever you need. You read the great books in everything. Is it philosophy? Then you read philosophy. And don't just, you know, what's this opinion? What's that opinion? Read about it. Read about the stuff. All right? If you're run wondering what Nietzsche's opinion is on something, read Nietzsche. Don't read some article. Don't read some article. Read Nietzsche. And then, this is more advanced. And this is what I'm doing right now, but I will do it in other ways uh, very soon as well. And that is helping. The third purpose principle is helping others others helping others helping others through a <laughs> medium. All right. The third principle is helping others, helping others through a medium. All right. I'm helping you now through a medium through camera, all right? Through video film, film, movies, all that stuff. If you wanna, if you're an artist and you, you wanna help people through your art, that is actually the third purpose principle. This is more advanced. The first is the simplest. So, the first purpose principle is helping yourself. It is the simplest. The advanced is helping others, obviously, because you're dealing with other people. 
So you're, you know, if you want to help people with your know, diet or something, or you want to be a personal trainer or something like that, you got to, you know, deal with people. So it's much more advanced and you have to, you know, work out, you know, your business. And so that's why, you know, the second foundation and third and fourth foundation, they start, you know, appearing here. I will create, you know, courses about all of these foundations now at, and they will just go deeper and deeper and deeper and so forth. All right. So helping others is much, much, much more advanced because imagine you have this core here. You're trying to, you know, help this core. This core is helping this core. So it is, you know, much more advanced. All right. I will keep this a bit brief because, you know, that it's already too long. So, and helping others through a medium is deeply advanced. All right. Helping others through a medium is deeply advanced. You shouldn't attempt this, you know, unless you're mature enough, starting to help others and so forth. And also, also, you know, you got to understand the medium. You got to understand something uh, art here. You know, you, you got to be artistic here. You don't have to be that artistic. You know, you can be a personal trainer and create, you know, training uh, stuff. But, uh, but the thing is, um, the medium thing now that will, you know, it will still, you know, be mediocre or something unless, you know, you acquire this, you know, if you have a talent, you have to be multiple, you have to have multiple talents. That's just how it is. You know, you got to learn yourself, learn stuff. Uh, if you don't have talent, you still can have experience. You don't need talent to have experience. You don't need talent to gain experience. That's one of my, I have this Chinese fortune from a fortune cookie. I have this paper that says, you know, you don't need talent to gain experience. And it's true. You don't need talent to gain experience, but you have to have some other talent that you unite there. You know, you have some other talent that you work with, you know, so you, perhaps you have a, through a medium through a medium can be, you know, like YouTube, it can be movies. If you want to help people through your movies or something like that, you got to realize that you, what this means, you know, and you should work on yourself. Most people don't work on your themselves. You have to help yourself first. You have to help yourself first. This is much more advanced, especially two and especially three, because it includes something else. You know, it, it gets more complex, you know, and all of these are purpose principles because they have a direction. You start helping others. That is a direction. As you can see when I'm uh, writing here, it is a direction. You know, you're helping this guy moving this direction instead of moving in circles in his own whole life, you know. This is starting to look like atoms here. Um, now, that's it. It is deeply advanced. You work on yourself first. You don't have to worry about the second and third purpose principles unless you become, you know, more mature. Then you can work on that stuff. All right. Obviously, you help, you know, your your closest people. But, you know, this is this means, you know, starting business stuff. This has to mean that, you know, because unless you, if you don't start your own business, you don't own yourself. So you have to do this stuff. All right. So that's purpose. That's what purpose means to me. That's the purpose. What mean, what purpose means in my philosophy. These are my definitions, nothing else. It's based on experience and, you know, reading, but reading is experience as well. So you don't have to worry about what this or that stuff, this means, that means what you have to do is work on your life. And that is much more important than ruminating. Stop ruminating, start taking action, start, but realize and adopt my, um, my mentality here with health. And tomorrow we will see what we're going to discuss. I'm going to follow my instincts, nothing else. Just that. That's how it is. I am infinite. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff within me. If you have any questions, comment down below. I will answer, you know, purpose, value, existence. We will go deeper and deeper into stuff. I'll make a different video, perhaps about existence and so forth. 
whatever you want to when it comes to my philosophy and um, you can join my Facebook group if you can uh, you can add me on Facebook if you want to I only use it for you know my stuff nothing else there is nothing else on it and I only care about this purpose because that is my purpose you know my purpose is crystal clear uh, and so uh, you can comment down below ask me stuff if you have any problems you can consult me as well if you're a high achiever if you have you know if you have you know uh, if you want to perfect your human condition you can uh, ask me uh, on, by email and we will talk about talk about stuff and we will see what we can create you know if we're a match and stuff like that so I'm uh, quite you know I am very uh, selective there so I, I'm not going to choose just anyone you know uh, if so keep on working on yourself keep on improving yourself keep on focusing on yourself everything will be great everything will be fine and I will see you guys and girls tomorrow.